top story tonight. No water. Hello, good afternoon. Schools forced to close. Elderly residents without water. Thousands of households still have dry taps and no flushing toilets after the fifth day of severe water supply problems. South East Water today told customers that some of them still won't be reconnected until tomorrow. The affected areas are the Weald of Kent from Benenden to the south of Goudhurst and in Sussex, people in Wadhurst, Mark Cross, Rotherfield and Crowborough are facing problems. Bottled water stations are in operation at Mayfield, Rotherfield Field, Wadhurst and Headcorn. As South East Water struggles to get people back on, it has revealed that in the last week it has produced 678 million litres of water compared with a weekly average of 540 million. It says the current demand is comparable to the Covid lockdowns and last year's drought. Our reporter Juliet Parkin reports on a fifth day of water issues. Another well, Juliet joins us from a water station in Waterhurst. Juliet, just give us a sense of where we are on day five. Some supplies back on, but not all. Cross live now to our environment correspondent, Yvette Austin. She joins us from Arding Lye Reservoir, which looks as if the level's pretty decent there. Uh, groundwater source is currently in a good position, we're being told. But if demand continues to stay high, those levels clearly are going to drop. Day. So, as we saw in Juliet's report, a number of politicians have now started to criticise South East Water, including the MP for Wealdon, Nuzgani, who joins us live on the line now. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, we're hearing, of course, that these water supply issues are now starting to spread, as Yvette was just saying. Have we reached the point where the government needs to step in now? Well, it's, it's for get the right together. We have, we, have, we have the wrong sort of weather for water, seemingly, don't we, whatever the weather. You say it's a southeastern's problem, but it's becoming a lot of people's problem, isn't it? And isn't it time that the government did more to force the water companies to really deliver the services that people are paying for? Look, they, they come under a huge amount of... In other news, staff at a mother and baby supported living unit where a baby died after being left alone to starve for six days were aware that exactly six months ago a crush brought a concert at the Brixton Academy to an abrupt halt. Two of those who went to the venue that night never came home and their families are still waiting for answers about what happened. Gabby Hutchinson, a security dog handler from Gravesend, along with Rebecca Ikulamo, a mother of two, both died from the injuries they sustained in a crowd crush. Speaking for the first time since their deaths, the families say they are still coming to terms with their loss. Leanne Rooney's report contains some distressing scenes. <laughs> The holding centre for migrants at Manston has become unacceptably overcrowded for the second summer running, according to the Chief Inspector of Borders and Immigration. In a new report, David Neal says there have been some improvements. And Mark joins me now. Hello, Mark. What's next for this inquiry? Well, hopefully some sort of publication later this year, because as we hope, we don't have that. No interim findings bumped from April last year to spring this year, now to the autumn, and today's appeal for witnesses may well delay it yet further. But I think the delay does matter. It matters to families, of course, even if they're being kept in the loop. But it also matters to the NHS because Sir Jonathan will be making recommendations about safety in morgues. The NHS, two years on, don't know where they stand. And that matters because we need to know patients are not being put at risk in hospital morgues in this country, Ellie. Mark, thank you. Now, it is just after 10 to 7, a reminder of our top story tonight. Schools forced to close. More blue skies and sunshine as we end the week, but signs have changed through this weekend. I'll tell you more later in the programme. A school in Hastings has today unveiled a statue celebrating Romani culture, which is already helping to combat prejudice for students. It celebrates 50 years since the release of the Dadakoi, a children's book about a young Romani girl living in Rye. Students at Hastings Academy helped to make the statue created by the artist blacksmith Jake Bowers, who himself has Romani heritage. James Dunn has more. 
Now, an elaborate sting and some sensational headlines. The Wagatha Christie trial gripped the nation last year when footballer's wife Rebecca Vardy sued her former friend Colleen Rooney. Rooney had revealed on social media that she had laid a cunning trap to prove Vardy had been secretly selling stories about Wayne and Colleen Rooney to the press. And as Alison Ferns reports, it's got all the ingredients for a highly entertaining stage production, which starts in Brighton tonight. It's dot dot. Great fun. Now let's have a look at the weather forecast. More good news, I hope, John Hammond. What? I thought the sunshine would last forever, John. Thank right. you. But it is good to have some blue in the forecast, of course. That's it. See you later. Bye bye.